Good morning and welcome to Monday. Good morning and welcome to Rockstar Fit Monday. We have once again <laughs> the awesome Natalie Dow, also known as Rockstar Arms. Good morning, Good, Nat. Good morning, guys. Nice to be here again. Good morning. How was your weekend, Nat? Weekend was good. Um, yeah, you know, nothing too exciting. Again, a bit of exercise, um, some good food, and we're doing uh, as much as we can sober October. So uh, some non-alcoholic spirits yesterday. Oh, nice. You know, I think, I think many people want to know, right, Nat, do you take a day off during the week or, or do you work out seven, seven days a week? <laughs> uh, Monday is my active recovery day. So I do... Uh, just a really light session today and then spend some time stretching. Um, so an hour of something, but but nothing too crazy. So mm. the answer to your question, Glenn, is no, she doesn't no. take a day off. Because, I mean, to everybody else, a day off means laying on the couch, eating yeah. whatever yeah. you want Don't and not even anything. putting on your leggings, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I was just thinking about this yesterday, right? Taking a break over the weekend is actually the worst idea. The worst, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. because you're thinking to yourself, oh, it's the weekend, I'm going to take a break, so I'm just going to eat anything I want to eat, right? Oh, yeah. But yeah. You're, you're eating it without expanding anything. That's right. And you've got time on the weekend to go and be active as well. So, right. yes, you know, go and do something in the morning, then enjoy your eating after that. That's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why Work did I think it. of that? Now you know. <laughs> now you know. You want to start your 28 days again? <laughs> Restart. <laughs> it's okay. You know, I, I, I've stopped being so hard on myself. Mm, yeah. yeah. But then yeah. again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay now. I don't know whether Nat knows this, but I told the guys uh, last <laughs> week that I injured myself again. Oh my yeah. God. So, One more time. That was That's last nice. week, last weekend, you know. I, I went for golf with the with the wifey, you know, we spent like an hour and a half at the range, you know, I was already feeling all achy and then I went on with a full on uh, uh, spin session uh, for <laughs> half an hour, did um, weight training and of then course. jumped oh my on my <laughs> treadmill. Mm. And I then I, 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 I was just in, in total pain the next day and I couldn't do anything for the next like five days. Sounds oh, familiar, Glenn. Yeah. We've heard yeah. this story before. Many, many times. Yeah, a few times before. <laughs> I think oh Glenn forgets that he's not 22 anymore. Exactly. Yeah. You're 22 exactly. also, you don't do until I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? I'm going to start to work out again today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you took a whole week off. I took a whole week, a whole off. week off. I was right, just okay. in so much pain. Oh my goodness. Oh, Slow down. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Moderate, moderate. All right. So this morning... Yeah. Uh, what's the workout? Going okay, to be so like? yeah, she, well, today we'll be working out on abs, but uh, we also want to talk a little bit about um, whether we should lift heavy or work on corrective exercises. What's that about? Yeah, so you know, a lot of people are, are saying this is for you, Glenn. Too. Yeah, just just <laughs> you know, suck it up and go and lift, right? Yeah, or suck it up, pick it up, doesn't matter. Um, you know, that's really not the right thing to do. Everyone moves differently. Um, a lot of people don't know how to set up for a heavy lift exercise or actually what load they can handle. So um, really the verdict is random lifting heavy is going to injure you. Um, but use specific exercises like squats and deadlifts to look at your form, correct your movements and understand how heavy you can actually lift. So yes, lift heavy, but there's some caveats around it. Mm, okay, right. okay. Okay. When you say corrective exercises, can you explain corrective? Ex what's corrective exercise? Yeah. So if you think about if you're doing, say, a deadlift, um, you know, you may favor one side of your body yeah. and not realize the same as squats. You know, you not, might not be pushing your knees out enough or, or have your back in the right position. So it's understanding and getting that movement right uh, uh, with any imbalances before you decide to load up and go load up heavy. On yeah. Okay. 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 All okay. right. All right. So this morning we're going to be working our abs, huh, Nat? Yes, we certainly are. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Doing it. 
Uh, I, I I don't think so. Not, <laughs> not, today. not today. All right, but you can work out with Natalie Dow right now on the Big Show TV. In the meantime, here's One Direction with What Makes You Beautiful on One FM ninety one point three. So, so come on. I just have a question, Nat, because not yes. a lot of people know how to lift correctly. How will they know if they're at home or in the gym and no trainer around that their posture is actually right? I'm only asking this because now we can see you. So how do you know? Uh, yeah, mirror is the best way. So, I, you know, watch a YouTube video of a, a trainer or something if you don't have access to one. Mm. Um, even get your friend to spot you that, um, but in front of a mirror is really the best way to do it and do it without weights. Just do it with the bar first until you, um, you know, feel confident before you load up and everyone loads up way too fast, you know, like, let, just keep going, just keep going. No, you should be building up that 5% a week, no more than that. Yeah, mm-hmm. the oh, mirror is so very yeah. important. I remember, like, you know, when I was a teenager and I was looking at myself in the mirror all the time while while weight training, even at home, everyone's like, hey, you know, it's so narcissistic and all that. Yeah. They all, but no, I mean, it's so important, right? Yeah. It is. With any, you know, it doesn't have to even be heavy, even with dumbbells, with a kettlebell, even if you're doing an air squat, to look in the mirror and yeah. understand how your body's moving is really valuable rather than just think you're doing the right thing. Exactly. And and I always say to people, video yourself too. Everyone's mm. got their phone in the gym, so record yourself doing it and then go home and study it and record it from different angles. Yeah. Because mm, yeah. okay. when you even when you lift a dumbbell, you can see your muscles move differently when it's in the mirror versus just going up and down yeah exactly yeah. yeah so use use your phone to yeah to record it and study it afterwards yeah. and your posture especially i mean looking at yourself in the mirror i mean you might see a little uh, lopsidedness you know, yeah, while yeah, you're training true. right which you exactly wouldn't right. Other, otherwise no yeah mm. okay i'm gonna okay. buy myself a mirror today <laughs> there oh, you go. for my patio yes Okay. Yeah, you need to get a nice big one. It really makes a difference, though. It really, really does. Mirrors are best. Yeah. I love yeah, mirrors. Yeah, mirrors are best. Yeah. Yeah. You love, you love mirrors because you like looking at yourself. Yeah. I've always wanted mirrors on the ceiling. There you oh. go. <laughs> champagne, champagne on ice. Okay. <laughs> a water bed, I think. <laughs> A round one or a heart shaped one. There you go. Let him move and rotate 360. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Now work out. Okay. Work let's out. get Do down this. to some exercise, shall we? <laughs> okay, guys. Today we're going to be just doing abs. So we're on the ground for all of it. Um, so, first exercise, I'll just run you through everything is our good old butterfly sit up. So, legs bent, reaching back. Next one is we're doing half wipers. So hands out, knees parallel and side to side while keeping our body straight up. So we're just moving our hips. And then it is going to be a reverse crunch. So again, just a little up and down. Uh, Toe taps, so working our obliques side to side. And then the last one is climber taps so we're in a plank and we're tapping our toes so if this is too hard you can just stay in plank um and then if you want an extra hard one go into a bent knees yeah go into the bear crawl taps then you're really gonna feel it in your abs Yeah. Okay. So, Glenn's like, okay, I've changed my mind. Glenn's getting mad. <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> he saw the first one. He was he was all very promising, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I can do this, and then <laughs> perhaps not. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you oh, you're gonna feel it, but that's all right. All right. So 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest. So enough recovery time, and we will start in five seconds, guys. Ready for those butterfly sit ups. Let's go. Hands back and then forward to touch your toes. Making sure your feet don't lift off the ground. If you can't go all the way up, can you just go as far as you can? Yeah, you should. I mean, ideally, you should be able to get your... So use your hands for momentum Momentum. to get yourself up. Yeah. Mm. You, uh, You should. And having your knees bent is... Uh, it should make it a little bit easier for you too. Mm. That's 
five seconds left. Nat, Nat just makes it look so, so yeah, she makes it look so, so seamless. <laughs> but this is so fun, though. I'm, I'm sure you, it like, is, yeah, you yeah. like this exercise as well. Yes, right? the butterfly, butterfly setups it. are great. Butterflies yeah. are good, yeah. yeah. If you can't, you know, if you just want a quick ab exercise, they're great. But it's now more an upper ab workout, right? It is, mm. it is. And now we're going to do the wipers. And so this is, you're going to feel in your obliques in the mm. side. Mm. So this is a really good run. Not so good if you've got a bad back. Mm. So FD, FD, not for not you. For you okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I tried doing this once, eight for days. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 But, but then having said that, a, a twist is okay for a bad back? It is if you hold it. Uh, yes. a, a supine yeah. twist? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you're just holding it. Um, mm. But here thing, you're rocking it. Yeah. Well. Yes. And you're wanting to keep your body facing up. Mm. Mm, yeah. Okay. You you feel it a lot on your spine. You're, 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 yeah. You're, yes. Mm. Yeah. Rotating it. Mm. And your lower back a little bit. So, and the yeah. arms are out to just to help stabilize it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's okay. another feel good exercise. Very good. Yeah. Mm. Now we're doing our reverse crunches. So, same position and just up and back. So, just a little lift off the ground. Doesn't have to be crazy. Lower abs. Yeah. This one's a really. Good. It looks so innocent, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you can always stretch out and up as well. That's the extended version, but we'll just do little crunches today. That's it. 12 seconds. Oof. Abs, the feeling, yeah, this one, the day after. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is like, <laughs> All right, guys. Ooh, stretch it out if you need to stretch it just bring your knees in oh yeah and we're gonna yeah some good uh, then, ab stretches yeah the best one is up yeah oh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a cobra oh cobra all right toe taps for this one feet a little bit further than hip width and or ankle taps just as far as you can go keeping your shoulders off the ground off the ground yeah okay. yeah just your neck nice and relaxed. And this one you'll really feel as well in your obliques. We should all be doing this while watching TV, actually, you know? This, the butterfly sit-ups. Mm. Yeah. It's so easy. It is easy. I think if you permanently sort of leave a mat on the floor in the living room, then it's no excuse to not just jump on it. Can I do that's this right. on my bed? No. no. Oh, <laughs> Not unless that's a wooden plank. <laughs> I can't leave a I can't leave a mat in my living room. My rabbits will make it home. <laughs> <laughs> the other good one is leave like even for recovery is leave a roller in your a spiky roller in your in near the lounge or um you know a lacrosse ball or a hard ball to roll out your hips while you're sitting down watching mm. too. So that's mm. always good. Mm. All right, mm. last exercise. It. Hmm. It's World Pasta Day today, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> According to Angel. It is, it is. According to the internet. I didn't make this up. Yay, <laughs> <laughs> So tempting. Who who doesn't like a plate of oh, pasta? No, oh no, a good plate of pasta. Oh. Oh. <laughs> watching <Yeah>. exercise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like while well, I eat my plate of I'm pasta. I'm thinking about pasta now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 15 seconds. <laughs> good job, guys. Oh. Good job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good job. I never do anything so good job. I just want to I felt that out. I don't know about you guys, but I felt it. Okay, you tell people that you're <laughs> in three, two... Big Me, the Foo Fighters, right here on The Big Show. 1FM 91.3, we're also live on The Big Show TV, which is our Facebook page, 1FM 91.3's uh, Facebook page. Our guest for this morning is Rockstar Arms, Natalie Dow. Once again, good morning, Natalie. 
Good morning, guys. That was a hard workout. Well, for me, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you, were watching, <laughs> if you were watching us on Facebook, uh, you can look forward to another set uh, of those ab workouts. If you haven't watched us yet and need some ab workouts, uh, turn on Facebook now, 1FM913. So, Natalie, today we're, we're talking about um, this or that, you know, fitness topics that always get people talking. So, what is compound... What are compound exercises and what are isolation exercises? So compound exercises use multi-joints. So if you think about squats, presses, rows, lunges, they're using uh, multiple parts of your body at the same time um, and definitely should form the foundation to any of your training programs. But then if you're thinking about if people, you know, want to pump their biceps, um, that's an isolation exercise. So what should you do? You should do both, but most definitely those compound exercises are the most important. And then things like hamstrings and abductors should be part of your isolation routine because especially if you're a runner, if you're not working on those and they're weak, then you are going to get uh, injuries. So working on those specific body parts to avoid injury or if you want big guns to, to build those guns, then yeah. uh, is when you work on the isolation. Mm. So something like a plank would be a compound exercise? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, because okay. Yeah. you're working so many parts. Yes, yes. Oh. And you don't even have to think about weights. It can be just uh, body weight as well. Okay, okay. So um, what about uh, moderate reps, you know, uh, versus something like higher and lower reps? So what are the differences and what should we be doing? Yeah, so when we say moderate or normal reps, it's six to 12 reps make up most training programs. That's the, the optimal range. Um, and if you're doing lower reps and doing heavier, then generally you're trying to build a, a lot of muscle. And then if you're doing higher reps and lighter, then you're trying to increase uh, your endurance. Basically, any amount of reps are good if you're doing them. Um, but if you're doing lower, you need to recover longer in between sets. Meanwhile, um, you know, doing high rep sets to failure is a good way to train, but a lot of people don't like being uncomfortable. Um, so, you know, there is no, no yes or no. Um, you know, if you are a beginner, or if you're just looking for something to do, st stick to those six to 12 reps is my advice. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. okay. And, uh, you know, my, my, my favorite part here, interval training versus steady state cardio. I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, many people who, who may not necessarily understand, understand yeah. this, yeah. you know, yeah. might just think, okay, just, just jumping on a treadmill and just running, you know, at the same, at the same pace. Like uh, a 30 minute um, run. Sorry? Like a 30 minute run. Like a 30 minute mm -hmm. run. Mm -hmm. Uh, is more beneficial than if you're, you know, doing interval training. For example, you, you jump on the treadmill and, uh, you know, you run steadily for like, you know, two minutes and then you sprint for the next mm. minute or so. Which mm -hmm. is more effective, Natalie? Well, both of them burn calories. Um, so that's the most important thing. Um, so if we're talking about interval training, we're talking about HIIT training, really. And that's, you know, that burns really uh, a lot of calories fast but you can't do it for 60 minutes, you know, or, or very few people can. So while it's great um, to really work on that VO2 max, um, it's not sustainable over a long period, whereas you can go for a power walk um, or a jog for, you know, a couple of hours if you, if you really want to. Um, so both are good, but if you're doing that steady state, you know, stick with, as a general rule, heart rate between sort of 120, 130 is always great. Mm. Um, and then you're going to build that cardiovascular fitness um, and it's going to be long-standing cardiovascular because you're doing it at a, a very moderated rate. Mm. Um, but ideally do a bit of both. Um, because if you're just doing one, you are going to plateau at some point too. Mm. So there's there's room for both. Um, you know, you, you don't need to be doing HIIT classes every single day of the week. Mix it up with something a bit slower. And, and also HIIT can be pretty hard on your body too. Mm. So yeah. go, go for that, you know, power walk or a swim or whatever it may be uh, to mix it up and build on that cardio fitness. But, you know, this is my problem right now. When I'm, when I'm working out, right, steady state cardio... Uh, maybe at about 130 uh, um, uh, beats per minute, right? Mm. I feel like I'm not doing anything. 
You know, like when I'm on my spin bike, right? And I'm, I'm hitting like 130, 135 uh, beats per minute. I don't feel like I'm working out unless, you know, I go with a blast for like maybe uh, two minutes. So so I'm steady state and then I, I, I stand up and I'm blasting on, on, on the spin mm-hmm. bike, right? And then I feel my heart rate go up a little bit more. I start to perspire. Then I feel like I'm doing work. Is that but if, safe? But if I'm but if I'm just steady, steady state cardio, I I always feel dissatisfied. Is that a normal a normal feeling? It, it is. So and it depends how long you're doing that bike for, right? So if you're on there for sixty minutes at that steady state cardio, you are getting a great workout. Um, the thing I do, and I see this with runners out there all the time, is you know if you're doing heart rate training, you're told to keep your heart rate at one thirty or one thirty five. Um, and then someone passes you that's going faster and you know, know you can go faster. The ego gets in the way and people want to chase them down. Stick, stick, you know, 80, 85% of your training should be done at that steady state cardio. Um, mm. And it's building that base, it's building that endurance. So you don't have to be out of breath every single time you exercise. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at, at one point I was, um, you know, I was on my spin bike and I was burning like 1,000, 1,020 mm. calories. Uh, I, I felt like it wasn't good enough. I feel like after that, <laughs> just look at that, that, face. I, I wasn't panting or anything like that. I'm like, is this real? Well, right, that just yeah. means that you've got really good stamina, right? Yeah, exactly, you're and you exactly you're, f- you're getting fitter. That's, yeah. that's the whole idea. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be taxing. You're not trying to beat yourself, Glenn. Okay, <laughs> you, yes, you sound yes. like you're having a competition with yeah. yourself. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so confusing. <laughs> I think I am sometimes, yeah. you know, which is yeah. really <laughs> irritating. <laughs> okay, let's let's work out with Natalie Dow once again. Uh, set number two coming up on the Big Show TV. In the meantime, here's Olivia Newton-John featuring ELO Xanadu on the Big Show One FM ninety one point three. Oh, I it's nice gonna... to have some Olivia Newton-John. Sorry, Nat. I thought you were going to play Let's Get Physical. That, was... oh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been a good one. <laughs> Let's get physical. <laughs> physical. <laughs> All right, guys. Ready for set two. You may be a little bit... Uh, sore this time. <laughs> okay, let's go. Those butterfly sit-ups. Yeah, Glenn, you should just go for longer. Mm. Yeah. Not necessarily faster, right? Oh, yeah. Two hours now. Well, if that's the case, then, <laughs> you know, as long as, you know, it's still, I'm, I'm still going to reap the benefits. Yeah, of course. Then yeah, can't you just okay. go until you get tired? Are you tired after one hour? No. That's there why you go. he does just like 3,000 things. Yeah. What? And then yeah. you get injured. Yeah. Yeah. Just go yeah. on your bike for like two hours. Watch a, yeah. watch a Bollywood movie. <laughs> no, yeah, there like, you go. Bollywood I was watching On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Oh, I was watching all go. the Bond movies, oh. uh, <laughs> you know, the, yeah. yeah, last week. And you still and, haven't watched a new one. Net. And get Net. get your get your heart rate up to maybe a little bit higher, like one thirty five to one forty, and then do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that'll make the difference. Yeah, Just increase. raise it slightly. Yeah. Okay, mm. that sounds like a plan. Small increase, but still go long. So still do that yeah. one hour yeah. instead of like one hundred thirty, bring up to one hundred forty, one hundred fifty five. So that means faster, uh, faster revolutions longer, on the yeah. bike. Mm. 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 Yeah, so I'm yeah. going at it like 95 to 100 something. I keep mine that's, at 100. Uh, that's at the, um, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because when I do my long runs, my, my heart rate sits at 135, 136 the whole time. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. That's oh my so goodness. That's, yeah, that's, you know, I'm not going that fast. How important is it to keep an eye on your heart rate, though? I mean, not everyone has maybe a smartwatch or not everyone's kind of like looking all the time just to keep it. So how important is that? It's super, it's actually really important. So you can, if you're, I always say if you're running 60 minutes, say some days you'll run 10 kilometers, some days you'll run eight because your heart rate will determine how you feel on the day. So oh, right. rather than running for distance, run for time, because if your heart rate's higher, um, then there's something not right with your body. You didn't get enough sleep, you yeah. haven't fueled properly, oh. you're getting a bit sick. So oh, right. the best way to, uh, to see how you're feeling is actually by mm-hmm. your heart rate. So that's when your heart rate is higher. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when you're uncomfortable, when your body's uncomfortable, it's not at its optimum, your heart rate's usually higher. Right. Yeah, okay. and, and if you're running at the same pace as you normally do on the same 
the same running route or yeah. cycling mm. route. Yeah. So you know where you should be, but actually you're not feeling it today, then That's your heart true. rate's going to be higher. Mm. And, okay. and right. sleep is generally the one that impacts it, you know, mm. dramatically. Yeah. yeah. That's got one of those sleep buses. Does coffee yeah. uh, disturb your heart rate? Like Yeah, it does. If you have enough of it, you can, you know, you can get that jittery feeling if you yeah. have too much before you exercise. So mm. caffeine is um, you know, is a big one. It'll get your heart rate up um, unnaturally. Sometimes people do it just to give them a boost in the morning, but you know, do it with do it with care because it yeah. will have an impact. What so for the everyday person, keeping your heart rate at about 130 is good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it depends on age and, you know, yeah. mm. and all of that. But, you know, around 130 is, is a good number to aim for because you're going to get a really good workout with that. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What advice do you have, uh, you know, for people who, um, because they're so busy, right? I mean, with their families and work and all that, you know, they want to get that workout in at the end of the day, but they're actually really tired and, tired, yeah. and not feeling, you know, optimum. Yeah. Uh, I walk. Go for a, a go walk. for a power walk or something. Get outside, get some fresh air. Right, um, mm. is is key because if you've especially if you've been stuck at your desk inside and everyone's working from home again and yeah, um, you know, get outside. That mm. will make a massive difference. Yeah, and we have such good weather compared to the rest of the world to be able to walk anytime unless it's raining, right? Mm. That's right. We really do yeah. have good weather. I mean, put the kids on the bikes or and you walk. Um, but I would say definitely try and get outside. It'll just give you a bit more energy. Yeah. Mm. Well, once again, yeah, I mean, listen, listen to your bodies. Because yeah. I'm, I'm just afraid of people who are not feeling optimum and tired and all that. And they, they just force themselves to go for an, a hit workout mm. or something like that. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's and right. They just push themselves too far. A walk is much better, you know, just leave, leave the ego at home and just walk. <laughs> Glenn, listening? Yeah. Are you listening, Glenn? <laughs> yes. You should have that on your wall. Yeah. Yeah. Your leave phone. the yeah. ego at home. On your, yeah. It should be on your doormat. <laughs> yeah. But he will be at ego home. Inside. So <laughs> no, ego he has two mats. One is leave the ego inside, one is leave it outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah walk, a bike ride, a swim, just something to get you outside. But yeah, going for a HIIT workout, if you're particularly tired um, you pro or, or doing heavy weights, you're probably going to injure yourself. So, you know, you need to be super careful. Mm. Okay. I'm noticing around my area, <coughs> we're getting a lot more families doing it. So you're right. They take, they're putting the kids on bikes mm -hmm. and the kids are cycling the, the, the track mm. and these guys are power walking or, or, or they're jogging. Uh, and it's become big family outings now. I'm seeing it a lot, particularly on the weekends. Particularly. Oh, the weekends is crazy. I mean, yeah. even my runs towards Marina Bay at like 5.30 on a Saturday morning, it's wow. packed. Wow. You know, yeah. it is, it's crazy. So that's the one good thing that COVID has done is that yeah. it's changed people's habits and they haven't given up. They're mm. still doing their exercise, which is fantastic. Mm. Yeah, that is yeah. that is good. Mm. Yeah, and a big round yeah. of applause for everyone who worked out with Nat there. Second yeah, well yeah. Good job. I'll be doing that ab workout later. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Okay, any any last questions for Nat? We've got uh, 30 seconds. No, I think uh, no, not we're for pretty me. Much, we're pretty much good today. Mm. Okay, so we'll go on air and... Um, mm. Last thank words. Nat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, stand by. Oh, uh, Nat, other than the... Um, cobra, you, cobra pose? You want to ask Nat that when we go on air? Stretching. Now she can show a little bit, right? We the have, stretching like, of the abs. Yeah, yeah stretching How, your abs. Like, what yeah. else do you can stretch we do? after every workout or like at the end? Just one shot. The, oh, after every workout. Mm. Oh, not after every set, after the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After the end of the set. Okay. Okay. Stand by. We're doing traffic. Uh, in three, two. 1FM 91.3 traffic. All right, we know we've got the usual delays across the expressways. The SLE towards the BKE, an accident after Upper Thompson Road exit. Congestion is to Lentor Avenue. Avoid Lane 1. Please stay within the speed limit. Have everyone buckled up. Be safe as you drive today. Good morning and welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. We just ended set number two with Natalie Dow, Rockstar Arms. Thank you so much for working out with us, Natalie. It's my pleasure as always. 
You know, how many so, calories do you think people have burnt after two <laughs> two sets? Yeah. Um, you know, I probably uh, 100, 100, 150 maybe. That's not bad. Okay. Huh? That's good. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's Ten good. more and it'll be a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One more set, everybody. One more yeah. set on your own though because you've got to let Natalie go. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Any last questions for Nat? No, nothing else. No, Any last right. words from Nat? Good. Thanks, guys. Well, you have a good week ahead and stay healthy. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Take care now. And up next, we have Bibi Chia, our principal dietitian. Good morning, Bibi. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Once again, wonderful uh, kombucha right there from Elixir. (laughs) Elixir, yes. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Did you try it? it? Yes, I finished everything. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it was really good. It was really and good. today, I mean, you're not just showcasing their elixir, but you're also going to be telling us how to make our own uh, kombucha at home. Yes. Okay. And so you don't have to buy a finished product. If you don't want to, you can always make your own. And uh, if you reserve some of that good kombucha that you have made, you can always make more because that will be your starter. Mm. Uh, and you can just continuously make kombucha at home. Wow. Oh, fantastic. You know, okay. okay. You know, it's interesting. When I got uh, the the kombucha, uh, my neighbor saw it sitting on my dining table. Kombucha and- is a country, you know? <laughs> That's Cambodia. K- Kem- oh, kombucha. Sorry, I- <laughs> Oh, that's kombucha. Anyway, um, neighbor saw it on the dining table and said, what's that? So I told her and she said, but not everybody can drink it. Is that true? Yes, that's right. Um, if you are uh, immunocompromised or uh, if you're pregnant, uh, we don't recommend people drinking unpasteurized uh, kombucha. So you have to pasteurize it first. Um, mm. And so, yeah, so, so there are some people who I wouldn't recommend drinking kombucha. Okay. So what does it mean to pasteurize it then? Boil uh, to it. heat it? Yes. To heat it. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so you literally bring it to the boil? Uh, yes, yes, yes. That's right. And then and it's safe? Yes, that's right. So you boil okay. off the, the maybe the little bit of alcohol that could be uh, naturally forming inside the kombucha as well as the uh, probiotics that are in there. So you're killing off uh, the microbes before yeah. drinking it. So uh, is it is it the alcohol that uh, people can't take or is it the probiotics? What What um, is it? Both, I think, okay. especially for pregnant women, first of mm-hmm. all, uh, they shouldn't be drinking alcohol. Uh, <laughs> and uh, at the same time, uh, the microbes could be uh, potentially dangerous. So okay. uh, unpasteurized food is not uh, recommended. Uh, okay. okay, all right. Okay. Okay. You know, kombucha cool. is amazing, right? I mean, it works perfectly for me. Whenever I feel like, you know, my tummy is not too, you know, comfortable, especially after a heavy meal and all that, mm. right? Mm. When I have kombucha, right, it makes everything better. That's why they call it elixir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so today I'm going to show how you can make your own kombucha at home. And this is a very special technique. We're using a bag and not a jar. Um, and there oh. are many benefits of using a CD compact versus a glass jar. Ooh, I will show wow. everybody. Okay. okay that's All great. right. So let's watch BB Chia teach us how to make kombucha on the Big Show TV while we check out Nirvana. I haven't heard this one in a while. Come as you are on 1FM. 91.3. Good morning, Singapore. Sorry, we couldn't join you for your kombucha making class. Yeah, yeah we were also busy. Yeah, and, and it's also late. Yeah, it's a, okay. kind of like a late evening class. It was. An it was yeah. Session. So now you can see how it's made, and then you can make it uh, at home. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so, um, you will notice that in this kombucha kit, there isn't a scoby. So, the scoby is like a typical, like a starter used in making kombucha. But now we're using a, just a kombucha starter, basically a freshly brewed uh, kombucha that you would keep maybe a fifth of it and then for your next uh, batch. So, it's, you're mm. using a liquid instead. And instead of a jar, we're going to use a silicone bag. Uh, and this silicone bag, if you look at it, it's a food grade uh, a, a bag. Uh, so you can buy other silicone bags as well uh, that's used to store uh, fruits and vegetables. And the reason why we're using this is because um, it's oxygen uh, permeable. So a lot of people think that, you know, silicone bag is completely sealing off 
uh, the food, but it's permeable. So the oxygen is being exchanged uh, from the inside to the out. Wow. So it lets oh, oxygen wow. in, but not liquids. Ye out. Wow, yes. that's crazy. Wow, that's okay. interesting. Wait, so if I put that back over my head, the, uh, you can still breathe. Don't I worry. Can, can, well, no, I no. Children, be... please don't try this that's at home. Why. Glenn. I can't believe I even brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, terrible. Don't put it over your head. Oh, yeah, don't oh, put oh it look at that. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's what it looks like. Yes, yeah, so like a little like handbag. A yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. So this has been fermenting since uh, Thursday. I think I will harvest it maybe in a couple more days time. Um, and uh, you got nice kombucha. Um, it and looks like it a does... mini Hermes bag. Right. <laughs> 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 Careful, they yeah. might they might release something. You can brew your kombucha while you shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brew it in your Birkin, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, the ingredients that you need are very humble ingredients. Um, it's just tea bags, water, and then sugar. So I mm. have 30, 300 mils of water in this kettle, which I'm going to start boiling. Um, and after it's boiled, we're going to make some tea inside this pot. So, um, if you like to use other types of tea, please feel free to do so. But today we're using black tea. Okay, so any tea at all can can be used. Mm. Apart okay. from like uh, some herbal tea, um, mm. um, um, so like mint tea that may not work. Uh, but green tea, red tea, black tea works as well. Mm. Um, and I think there are some studies using rooibos tea, uh, so that work too. Uh, Ooh, so I love like, my rooibos tea. That's your favorite, tea. yeah, FD. Yeah. Mm. So you can make rooibos uh, uh, kombucha. Mm. Um, and so this is uh, 8 grams of uh, tea, ba uh, tea leaves. So we're just going to pop that in a pot together with 60 grams of sugar. Um, and so this is already being uh, provided by Elixir, uh, but you can just use regular home sugar. Can you use mm. brown sugar for this? Uh, you can, okay. uh, but not artificial uh, sweetener. Sweetener, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So the the, uh, the microbes need the sugar uh, to ferment, um, mm. and so you may start with sixty grams of sugar, but you may not end up with sixty grams of sugar inside the um, right. Okay. The kombucha. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What about things like honey and uh, maple syrup? Is that still you still can use that? Uh, no, because no, I think honey is a little bit as uh, it it can kill off the microbes that's helping oh, right. you make oh. the kombucha. Mm. Okay, okay, right, so sugar right, it right. is then. Okay, so three hundred mils of hot water inside to brew the tea, uh, and the reason why we are using um, um, only three hundred mils of hot water is that after it's being brewed, I will add about one point two liters of cool water in there so that it becomes um, room temperature. Uh, okay. Oh. Because if we're going to wait for the 1.5 litres of water to boil and cool down, you will take a long time. Yeah. Oh, is that what the instructions actually say? 1.5 litres of hot water? Uh, no, it no. Uh, actually uh, tells uh, inside this kit, um, it, mm. it does recommend people to use uh, 300 mils of hot water and then, and then 1.2 litres of uh, cool water. Okay. Yeah, so we're just going to um, steep the tea. Um, and um, I, I, I think um, what I've tried doing with this was that um, uh, is this tea that's provided, but there are people who would use Earl Grey tea, so it may have a, a special flavor, uh, like a bergamot uh, flavor mm. inside mm. your compound. How long do you steep that tea? About 10 minutes, ten uh, 5 minutes. to 10 minutes, and then I would judge it from its, uh, uh, its color. Color, yeah. Mm. So yeah, and we're just gonna uh, dissolve the sugar that's in there, and this sugar. Sugar will in the morning, sugar in the evening, <laughs> sugar <laughs> at supper time. Be my little sugar and love me all the yeah. time. Sorry. Is that your Friday song? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll just wait for it to steep. Um, and then um, just a little bit about um, how this uh, SCOBY will form inside this bag. So um, typically the SCOBY will form, uh, is floating on the top. Uh, but because you're using a silicone bag and it's oxygen permeable, the SCOBY will form a bag in the bag. So you'll form like a oh. pouch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, yes, it's so strange. What is a SCOBY? It's like, it's what's a SCOBY? 
A SCOBY is a combination of yeast and bacteria, okay. and they form this really symbiotic, uh, like a gel. Um, and so there will be a pouch in the pouch. So what the SCOBY is trying to do is to protect the liquid in there. Um, and so in order to harvest, you kind of like open up the, the, the SCOBY pouch and uh, you get you can harvest your, your oh. kombucha on the inside. It's little, it's little creatures growing in there. <laughs> they are because it's like yeah, yeah. They they make a little home and there's a mother and their children and everything. They're like, like oh, sea growing. monkeys. Yeah, kind of like yeah. sea monkeys. Yes, <laughs> you can document their growth. <laughs> And, and how would you know if it's uh, good to drink or not? Um, mm. There is a litmus uh, paper on the inside of the kit. Um, they wave hello. They're like, okay, I'm okay. ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a I always find it so weird, though, all this, like, the, the mother and the scoby and all that. It's so strange. Yeah. Yeah. When I learned about this method, I thought like, wow, this is like childbirth, you know, there's yeah. a, like a placenta and then there's the liquid oh on the inside, there's the mother. Oh, yeah. gonna, you know what, I'm just going to buy my kombucha. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine Glenn sitting there and looking at his jar. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when your product is finished it should be between pH 2 to 3 so it's okay. still quite acidic Can we have um, traffic? And okay okay and that's where the colorful uh, you know litmus, litmus paper comes in okay here we go 1FM 91.3 traffic Usual delays across the expressways, that's for sure this morning. Uh, one or two areas that you want to look out for, and I'll give them to you now. Um, here we go. PIE towards Changi, a vehicle broken down after Jalan Anak Bukit. That's going to slow you down. And, of course, three areas in Ang Mo Kyo, all on Avenue 5. Avenue 5 towards Avenue 4, roadworks after Avenue 6. Avenue 5 towards Avenue 4, roadworks after Avenue 2, and on Avenue 5 towards Avenue 6, roadworks after Ang Mo Kyo Avenue 8. Please stay within the speed limit. Have everyone buckled up. Be safe as you drive today. Good morning, Singapore, and welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Well, actually, if you've been watching The Big Show TV, I'm sure you've been having fun because our principal dietitian, BB Chia, is teaching us how to brew kombucha <laughs> <laughs> yes and you can just use very uh, simple uh, tools and uh, just sugar and tea uh, together with a liquid starter you can make your own kombucha easily at home Mm, okay, sugar in the morning, sugar in the yeah. evening, sugar in <laughs> supper time. Be my little sugar and love me all the time. Uh, Sorry, so, so, Bibi, we were talking about, um, you said that uh, kombucha does have a little bit of alcohol and probiotics, which are not uh, particularly safe for those with, um, who, for those who are pregnant, as yes, well as... As those who are uh, immunocompromised, uh, so yeah, mm. you might not want to have unpasteurized food. Um, and mm. so kombucha can be unpasteurized, but uh, if you like to, you can pasteurize your uh, kombucha and enjoy it as well. Wait, but you just mentioned that there's alcohol in kombucha. Uh, yes, there would be a small amount, uh, but you will need to drink a lot to get uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because of the fermentation process. Yes, that's right. right. But I naturally. wonder whether how many people knew that. Because some people are just maybe sensitive to alcohol or whatever, right? So yeah, would, yeah. would this, um, you know, be uh, uh, unsuitable for them? Yeah, so I think uh, if it's never been pasteurized uh, and people are sensitive to alcohol, uh, they should not drink it. If they want to, they have to look for pasteurized uh, kombucha. Mm, okay. Oh, right. Okay, so there are uh, pasteurized kombuchas, kombuchas out there being sold. Yes, that's right. Okay. okay. So on the Big Show TV, uh, what you did is you've got this kit from Elixir and you're making your own kombucha because it comes with uh, a bottle of the starter as well as some sugar and some tea. What you've done is you've put the tea and the sugar in a pot with boiling water. Does that consider, is that considered pasteurized? Uh, no, because That's later not, on, okay. um, I'm going to add cool water in there so that it's in room temperature before adding the starter and popping it into this silicone bag. Um, mm. And so then the fermentation will start and you can right. harvest your kombucha in five to eight days time. Okay, okay. Very cool. And you were talking about SCOBY uh, on the Big Show TV. What, what is that? 
It is a symbiotic uh, uh, mixture of yeast and bacteria. So typically when you make uh, kombucha, it would be floating on top of your jar. But because we're using a silicone bag that is oxygen permeable, you will be able to see that the SCOBY forms a pouch around uh, the kombucha and it is like a bag within a bag. Oh, wow. Oh. Uh, and can you eat the SCOBY? Yes, you can eat the scoby, oh. but um, people make scoby bacon. Uh, I have not tried. What in the uh, world is sco scoby is bacon? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? So you take the scoby and then you can dehydrate it, flavor it, and fry it, and it's scoby bacon. But you're killing wow. the whole like little family, aren't you? <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Scoby is is bacteria, right? Yes, that's right. And you're, you're saying we, we should be eating this bacteria, as in like frying this bacteria and becomes like like scoby bacon, you say? Yeah, so you can wow. use uh, the scoby to make uh, vegan bacon. Uh, but there are people who also use it as compost. Uh, you can use that to make your next kombucha. Uh, you can do it, mm. make it in stir fries. And you can actually eat your scoby. <laughs> so how would you keep your scoby after you make your kombucha? I typically uh, dispose them because I would keep yeah. the uh, kombucha that I've made and use that as my next starter. So keep about 20% oh, right. of it uh, okay. and you can continuously have uh, kombucha. So, so you don't need the scoby itself to make the kombucha, mm, right? Wow. Okay. But how okay, can vegans it. eat scoby when they are plant-based? <laughs> Scobies are little sea monkeys. But bacteria. Right? They're not sea monkeys. <laughs> it's bacteria, Glenn. It's, it's bacteria. bacteria. <laughs> they don't have a face, so it's okay. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm confused now. Sure? Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let, let's continue to uh, watch BB Chia, um, you know, whip up her kombucha, all right, because it's getting very, very interesting. Watch us on the Big Show TV, which is our Facebook page, 1FM 91.3. Meantime, here's Natalie Imbruglia with Torn on 1FM 91.3. 1.3 All right. <laughs> so interesting. Uh, Scooby. Yes. Um I I Scooby Doo. -doo. Yeah. I, I think are also uh, recipes for um, kombucha, uh, pickled vegetables. So you can put like cauliflower, uh, um, you know, cucumber, cabbage, and make uh, your own pickled uh, vegetables offered uh, inside kombucha as well. So there are wow. different recipes for that. Um, oh, okay. wow. so besides besides me, the I, I, I think my curiosity is piqued about the scoby. Yeah, man, me too. Um, yeah, like. <laughs> What else can you do with it once you're done with the kombucha besides making bacon? Face mask? Uh, <laughs> 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 <Ew>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can cut two holes and it becomes one of the uh... Oh, is it that is it does it stay together? Is it, it like a... together? It's See like a what film? I mean? Uh... See? See? I Good wasn't, Lord, this you is... know, I wasn't you far too off, far off no. <laughs> Oh, so I was looking it up. So SCOBY actually means Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. Whoa. Yes. That's what the acronym stands for. It's like, oh. What's the acronym? I, I don't recommend people to put it on their face. Uh, I actually recommend that if you want to eat it, uh, is to cook it first. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I think that there's a lot of yeast and bacteria. In the so is, that, is that good for you? Um, you can eat it. I think there are no studies um, documenting eating the scoby, uh, but there are people who eat their scobies. Yeah, but but <laughs> you, just, sco you just mentioned like frying it, right? You know, when you said fry the scoby to make it a uh, 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 vegan bacon, right? I, I, I pictured nian kao, you know, which is like <laughs> crispy on the outside and soft on the inside, you know? Is it anything mm -hmm. like that? Um, I, I, I have not tried, but I have tried eating it like a little bit of like yeah. a stir fry. But I would want to use this to make scoby bacon. Uh, uh, I'm scoby looking bacon. at it. Scoby yeah, bacon. it's crazy. Scoby bacon. Scoby energy balls, smoothies, <laughs> jerky and candy. <laughs> Whoa, okay. So Don't apparently, yeah, no, apparently it's, uh, it's, it is, it can be quite good for you because uh, it can uh, normalize blood sugar and cholesterol levels. Is that true? I, I, I tell you what, I tell you what, Angel, <laughs> you mm. try it and let us know. My blood levels and cholesterol is fine. Anybody here that needs some, <laughs> some I testing? Want, I will try anything once. 
Have you seen True. image? Go look at the images of Scooby. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna want to eat it. No. Can 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 we put some peanuts on top? Maybe it'll look like mozi. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you can put it in like maki rolls as well. Oh, oh lord! Wow. So you can actually grow your own uh, food and drink in your house. <laughs> that is true. Wow. Is true. wow. Okay. okay. So how do you know if your kombucha has gone bad? I mean, you yeah. you're gonna put the water in now. Okay. Sorry. Carry on first. Yeah. So you will know if it turned bad if you see like different colored mold in there. It should look, you see, completely like this color, okay. like brown. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Um, and if it's um, a moldy, you know, black and completely white, white mold, okay. then you must throw the whole batch out. Try, don't try to save the uh, uh, any of it <laughs> okay, okay 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 and then we're just gonna mix the cool water in i'm just gonna gently pour that in so that it becomes room temperature and this part is important because if we're gonna pour the starter into hot boiling tea uh, what will happen is that uh, uh the kombucha starter will die and there's no right. fermentation okay. Mm, okay. yeah okay. so that's too hot it's mm. too hot, yeah. So uh, now the pot is like a room temperature. So when we were doing the course, uh, what's interesting is Carmen, the founder, she watched our show uh, the, the week before, um, mm. describing what it feels like to be 80 degrees or 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. And so she's trying to also then describe what it feels like, you know. Um, but this is room temperature, so it's just very comfortable to the touch. Mm. Okay. Yeah. okay. Morning, this Carmen. <laughs> Morning. I'm sure she's watching and seeing how you're doing. Uh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope I get it right. <laughs> um, and so this is the starter. I'm just going to pour that into my pot. Uh, so this is about 300 mils or 350 mils of starter. Um, and so this bag can hold about 1.8 liters and it will fill up all the way to the top. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to let it stand. So maybe can I just here. ask you, what's in that kombucha uh, as in starter that what you just poured in there? It is actually exactly what's, what's inside in here. Uh, okay. Just, okay. Yeah. Without the mm. scoby. Without the scoby. <laughs> yeah, because the okay. rest of those yeah. bottles, they are done, right? They are done and they are flavoured. Mm. So this one has gone through secondary uh, uh, fermentation. So those mm. of you who would like to, um, after you harvest it uh, five to eight days, you can then put it in a jar for secondary uh, fermentation. You can add fruits, etc. But remember, mm. if you don't have a suitable glass jar or suitable jar, it will explode uh, because oh. of how much gas is being formed inside you from a lot of pressure like and you get a kombucha bomb. So you need to... Uh, burp it, meaning open, let a bit of the gas oh, come out. Oh, right. <laughs> I have read about yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Burp so it. Be careful, oh. people. Be careful. Yeah. Huh? This yeah. is a oh, living baby. So it's, it's like a, yeah, it's like a baby. <laughs> you gotta it is like baby. a baby. You got to burp it. <laughs> How often know do you, you have to change his nappy now? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but you said make sure you have a proper glass jar. What does that mean? I mean, Aren't all glass jars suitable? No, some are very uh, thin, right? Like those bottom yes. bottom ones, for oh, example. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Like yes, a thick so one, a thick, I get like a proper thick. one. Yes. So you can get it from Ikea, one of those uh, flip jars that are very sturdy. Oh, the airtight ones, yeah. Yes, yes. And do yes. you leave space? Uh, no, you don't have to. You do. don't have to, okay. Uh, you don't have to. Um, and it will become slightly fizzy uh, through the secondary uh, fermentation. And so if you like to uh, drink some fizzy drink that you have uh, homemade, uh, kombucha is actually a, a pretty good option. 30 seconds. Mm, okay. Right. Has anyone been killed making kombucha? <laughs> <laughs> Death by kombucha. Right? Yeah, it's like a kombucha All these bomb. living things and burping and bombs. And it sounds like a dangerous experiment. <laughs> and bacteria as well. Uh, and while we're fermenting, it forms acetic acid. So um, it is like a vinegar um, and it is considered postbiotic. So that brings you good health as well. Ooh, oh, nice. Mm. Okay, um, we're going back on air. Stand by. Up on air, stand by. Cristiano Ronaldo with Feel It Still right here. <laughs> what? Because it's Portugal the man. <laughs> <laughs> Portugal. Cristiano, who didn't man. do so well yesterday. Oh, wow. that, yeah. oh, oh that, that's right. Hey, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> he scored one that. goal and it was disallowed. <laughs> oh, there you go. Wouldn't have made any difference. Anyway, we're with BB Chia. <laughs> we're with BB Chia, a principal dietitian who's uh, teaching us how to make kombucha. This is so interesting. Uh, once again, good morning, uh, BB. Uh, a shout out to uh, Carmen from Elixir, who's probably tuned in right now as well. Uh, and, uh, well, I hope 
I hope you're, um, you know, you're, 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 you're doing okay because as you mentioned early on, right, Carmen is the expert when it comes to making kombucha, <laughs> right? And, and uh, you know, is she like grading you at this point or what? <laughs> She's definitely the sensei of uh, kombucha um, and um, I hope I've learned uh, uh, pretty much uh, everything needed to during the session to actually you know, re replicate it because this is a very interesting method of making kombucha. It's not uh, the most common, uh, but I do think thing that it is um, um, it does help with the fermentation and that is using a silicone bag versus an airtight jar uh, because the oxygen permeates throughout the bag um, helping your kombucha form better <laughs> nice okay so if you don't have one of those special bags with the handle you can use basically any food grade silicon uh, food bag Yes, that's okay. right. So any right. silicone bag, and, and make sure that um, it seals tight, and so um, you know uh, nothing goes in, uh, and uh, the liquid doesn't come out as well. <laughs> the scoby don't crawl out and yeah. haunt yeah. you in the middle of the night. Uh -huh. and I think just now off air, we we kind of stopped at the the litmus test. You were about to explain to us uh, uh, the litmus test. Yes. So. Um, um, after five or eight days, your kombucha's first fermentation would be done. And in order to know whether it is ready, you can also use a litmus test uh, and it should be between the pH of two to three. So it is quite uh, acidic. Mm. Okay. 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 So you've done the whole process of putting the cooler water into the pot and now everything's going to go into the bag? Yes. So okay. I'm going to pour everything in the bag, seal it, and then leave it in room temperature for about five to eight days. And then you're ready. If you like to, you can drink it. If not, you can uh, put it through a secondary fermentation and it can become fizzy, uh, like a fizzy drink. Most Does it have to be stored in the dark or anything? I was or, about to ask. Yeah. Uh, no, it can be stored anywhere, uh, just in room temperature. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, warm like making yogurt. It doesn't mm. have to be 40 degrees or anything mm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. You know, I, okay. I'm a fan of kombucha and I've tried like all kinds of kombucha, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell you right now that not all kombucha is made equal. <laughs> um, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, what's the difference between a kombucha like this uh, from Elixir and and a kombucha that you might just get from a supermarket that that is fizzy. I've had like fizzy kombucha mm. before. Does that like make soda. a difference? Like a soda, uh, yes. yeah. Um, I think, uh, first of all, Elixir is non-pasteurized uh, mm -hmm. at this moment. So you get all the goodness from the pro, uh, uh, probiotics. Um, and um, uh, for some people, they might need to have pasteurized uh, uh, kombucha to prevent you know, too much bacteria mm. or even alcohol inside that's naturally forming. Um, and yes, so always home brewed and naturally brewed is always the most delicious. And how much kombucha is too much kombucha? So for example, uh, those, those bottles right from Elixir, yeah. they're quite big. Does that serve two or can one person just consume the whole thing? So if we look at studies and work backwards, um, it's about 300 mils for an adult uh, for it to confer health benefits. Um, and so my recommendation would be based on uh, 300 mils a day, which is about the size of this bottle. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, well, All right, I, okay. I bottoms, bottle, uh, I bottoms up it. Yeah, <laughs> bottoms up it. <laughs> like, boom! Boom! <laughs> So sorry, I, I was like wondering if that's too much. An uh, entire bottle uh, is 300 mils, 350 mils if I'm not wrong. It's okay. um, and 300 mils is actually a safe uh, quantity to All be consumed. Right. Because I was very okay. thirsty. I was very okay. thirsty. Safe, you are safe. Yeah, yes. seem to be. Seem okay. to be. Fantastic. So I'm sure we're going to see the finished product on your social media. And where can one go if they want to see what you've done with the kombucha, Bibi? Um, I have a Facebook page called Food Tales with Bibi. I will show everyone the uh, finished product as well as the very mysterious scoby bag that yeah. forms around. It's like a placenta. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, one, one, one last question. And I don't mean to be disrespectful to Carmen or anyone else who, who uh, you know, uh, represents kom kombucha, kombucha, so to speak, kombucha. and and even yourself. But, you know, I was just thinking about it the other day, right, when I, I was about to drink. Can I add gin or vodka to the kombucha? Is that, <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> I did that over the weekend. Oh, took, did you? Yes, I took the grape flavor and I add some gin and it's a delicious cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cocktail. And she's still here on Monday, so you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you can do that. All right, yeah. all right. That's good, that's good. I wanted to try it, right? But I was afraid. Scared, like, you know, Just in so. case there's some kind of reaction or whatever if I pour <laughs> the gin in, you know. So I'm like, okay, okay. I, I, I better ask uh, Bibi, Bibi today. Okay, now you know. Okay, all right. Now you know. Kombucha now you cocktail. Know. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Bibi, for that. We really, really enjoyed today's session with you. Thank you, everybody, and see you next Monday. All Take right. Care. Thanks, Bibi. Up next on The Big Show, it's headline news and sports. It's as we say bye to everyone. Wow, we can actually add gin to it. I had no idea. That I is really very wanted cool. to do yeah. it. But this Scoby thing freaks me out. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> that's why I say I'm not gonna make my own kombucha. There's no way. Oh. I can't. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't make anything and see something living on my counter. All right, let's say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Share the video. <laughs>